Uh, morning, wonderful people. Uh, this is Mr. Ndabezita again, and we are still continuing with Thomas Calculus. Now, uh, one thing that we are going to do is to look at the solutions in here. So let me just try to zoom in so that we may see exactly what we will be dealing with. Right. We take it to the side. So uh, in 1.3, uh, remember previously we looked at the introduction, we went through some of the notes, and uh, today is the day where we will be solving some of the problems in here. Of course, we're not going to solve everything, we're just going to solve some. So the first thing that we will be looking at is the radian and the degree measures of conversion. And on my slide in here, I just took a pic so that I can show you exactly the diagram uh, with respect to the problem that we have and how I was able to figure out the answers. So the very first one says, um, on a circle of radius 10 meters, how long is an arc that subtends the central angle of uh, 4 pi divided by, fi by 5 and uh, uh, 4 pi divided by 5 radians and 110 degrees but one thing that we know in in problems like these is that we always use our angle in radians so we don't have a problem with this one it is already provided as a radian measure of an angle so one thing i should know for number a is that whenever i calculate uh, the length of an arc the length of an arc which we use s we know that it is equals to the angle in radians multiplied by the radius of a circle we were told that the radius is 10 there it is and they say how long is an arc so they want to know how long is an arc that should produce an angle of uh, 4 pi divided by 5 if the radius is 10. so i wrote the formula arc length equals uh, the, ra the radian angle in radians multiplied by the radius and I have my angle as 4 pi divided by 5. Therefore, I write down the equation. I substitute and I find a value of 25.132 meters. Because remember, it is the distance. How long? The distance. Which you can also write in uh, this form. So 25.132 meters is the same as 8 pi. Uh, meters as your distance this is very very important that we see it in that light that we are calculating distance here and remember when you say 4 pi divided by 5 multiplied by 10 meter you will get 8 pi meters so this is a distance in meters it's not an angle it's just the distance Right, and then we went to number, uh, sorry, number B. We were given an angle of 110 uh, degrees. So the first thing that we need to do in there is to ensure that we convert from degree to radian. And when we do that, and when we do that, I used a very simple conversion in here 180 degrees is equals to pi therefore 110 uh, degrees is equals to x and when you cross multiply in there you will find that the value of uh, 110 degrees is equivalent to uh, 11 pi over 18 so that would be the radian measure of that 110 degree angle and then remember we are still working on the same diagram but the angle there it's 11 pi over 18 
and we are still working on a radius of 10 so when we apply the formula arc length is equals to uh, an angle in degree an angle in radians multiplied by the radius in meters and then you say 11 pi over 18 multiplied by 10 and it should just quickly give you an answer let me just check Right, uh, let me just zoom in very fast. So this is the answer that you will be provided with. Uh, let me just... Okay, so our answer is 19.198 meters, which is uh, 55 pi divided by 9 meters so that would be the solution for number b very important right and then we went to number three and in number three you want to make an 80 degree angle by making an arc on the perimeter of a 12 in diameter disc and drawing lines from the ends of the arc to the discs center to the nearest tenth of an inch how long should be uh, the arc so let us try to read that with uh, more understanding so we want to make an angle of 80 degrees so we are already provided with an angle in uh, degree measure which needs to be converted to a radian measure and that's exactly what I did on the side so 80 degree measure is equals to 8 pi divided by 18 radian measure the first thing that we do we convert and then secondly we are given uh, the diameter let me check what went wrong here we are very good Secondly, what is it that we want? We are given the diameter as 12 in and we know that the radius is half of the diameter So 12 divided by 2 will give you 6 as the radius Very important and when I plug this on my calculator, I get 8 pi divided by 3 which is equals to 8.377 in but I think this will be the uh, most uh, accepted value in terms of this uh, fractional form. So your, they said, uh, okay, uh, to the nearest tenth of an inch, how long should be an arc? So your arc has to be, 8 pi divided by 3 meters long very very important so the first thing that you should do take your diameter divide it by 2 in order to get the radius because remember we are looking for uh, the radius distance from center to any point on the circumference and you would find your radius plug it onto your uh, equation arc length equals an angle in a radian measure multiplied by the radius and you would find the value there as this so that problem 3 was not uh, a difficult problem you just have to understand uh, how you should apply your things there alright I did not bother to do number 5 I left that one for you and then I think I went to let me check. Uh, I think it is somewhere above. Okay. And then uh, I went to number seven. I went to number seven. Let me check. 
Yes. So let me go a bit to the side. Uh, in number seven, they said uh, in exercise seven to twelve, one of sine, cos, and ten is given. Find the other two. Uh, if x lies in a specified interval, this is what they are saying. So we are given sine x equals 3 over 5 and x is an element uh, between pi over 2 and pi. And I know what this is in terms of the degree measure. That would be 180 divided by 2 which is 90 and 180. So it lies between 90 and 180. And 90 and 180 should be in here. And I know that sine is opposite, which is uh, y over the hypotenuse, which is always positive. Right. If it is always positive and x is an element, so in here, we were just told that the value of x that you find should be between this. Not necessarily that this is a quadrant where a terminal ray is defined. So we need to differentiate those two. So you have your sign which is opposite over a part news, uh, which is y divided by r, which is 3 divided by 5. Very good. And it should be between 180 degrees and 90 degrees which is uh, pi over 2 would be 90 and pi would be 180 and i am given sign i need to find the cos and 10 but i know that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse which is x divided by r and i don't have x because i was given y over r in here in order to find y because i know it forms a right angle to triangle I'm going to use the theorem of Pythagoras, which says x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And you would find that your x squared equals uh, 5 squared minus 3 squared, which is plus or minus 4. And now you need to decide uh, from there whether your x is positive or whether your x is negative so you have to decide that whether it should be positive or whether it should be negative and again what i did i said all right that's fine so if this is opposite over hypotenuse and it is on the between 90 and 180 which would be the second quadrant I know that y is positive in here but x is negative therefore i'm going to choose a negative four that's exactly what i did and then from there i can go and find the course adjacent over hypotenuse x divided by r minus four divided by five that would be the value of cos x and then i went on for tan x 10 is opposite over adjacent y over x which would be 3 over negative 4 and this should be correct and then from there let me check i went to number 9 and number 9 cos x equals 1 over 3 and x is an element between minus 90 and 0 and what does this tells us it tells us that the terminal ray is moving in a clockwise direction and this is cos and what do I know about cos cos it's uh, adjacent over hypotenuse right and then let me just do this 
go to the next page here we are right let me move it a little bit higher here we are so cos it's adjacent over hypotenuse and this adjacent seems to be a positive value but the angle there it's negative so we will assume that it is moving in a clockwise direction producing a negative angle okay that's fine so here we are cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse x over r and this is what we have because the radius is always positive and then i am looking for sine sine which is uh, opposite over hypotenuse so how do i find that i use the theorem of pythagoras x squared plus y squared equals r squared so let me just clarify something here if this angle is negative and your x is positive therefore your y should be negative because only a positive x and a negative y would produce a negative angle so if x is positive because uh, the radius is always positive therefore the value of y that we find in here has to be negative so that when we multiply there to get an angle we can find a negative angle so x squared plus y squared equals r squared uh, and then you find your y equals 8 you introduce a square root on both sides plus or minus the square root of 8 therefore your y should be negative because your x is positive and then we have course we can find sine sine it's y over h which will be negative square root of 8 over 3 and uh, 10 is opposite over adjacent that would be your opposite which is y what is the value in there it's negative please forgive me there it's negative the square root of 8 over 1 which is your adjacent there it is and you would find a value of negative the square root of 8 i just forgot to write the minus thing but i apologize sincerely for that right and then i went to number 13 so meaning all those which i did not uh, solve i have left them for you to do so let me just try to rotate this very good and let us look at number 13 because in number 13 uh what is it that they want so uh in number 13 <clears throat> they want us to graph a trigonometric functions graph the functions in uh, 13 to 22 what is the period of each function unfortunately i was not able to graph them i'm having some very serious problems with my graphical uh, software let me just try to check whether it will agree to do things now or whether it will still uh, resist so what I'm going to do I'm going to go to FX draw and see if things will work out just fine So here we are. Let us try to look at firstly the graph of y is equals to sine x. And what we are going to do, we are going to set our y max as 2 and our x maximum at 360. And I'm going to use radians. And in here, the scale of x will be minus. Okay, let me start from zero because I only want to show the positive side. Maximum will be 360 
uh, let me just leave these minors and so on let me see whether it will be able to draw up this function for me uh, expired evaluation virgin oh, we are in trouble now mm. we are in so much trouble okay let me leave it let me check whether this one will do what I want Let's just wait for a few minutes for that. Right, uh, let's say um, F at X and we want sine x very good and as you can see it is between the interval of minus 1 and 1 but in here I wanted to change in such a way that it begins in the intervals of 90 and let me look at the table of values uh, start value for x let it let it be 0 and end value let it be 360 and the steps of 90 and let's see whether it will work and you see 90 180 217 360 this is very good but the corresponding y values uh, we are having some problem doesn't really draw uh, what we have okay uh, let me let me check something else let me say um, f at x Okay, let me just say y equals sine 2x and let me press enter F at X equals sine two X enter. Okay, hi guys, uh, let's not waste our time. Let's just leave it, please. Uh, what I was doing in there was to find the period. I'm very sorry, <laughs> let's leave it. It's going to create very, very serious problems for us. So let us look at number 13. Uh, what is the period of each of these functions? So now, let me show you. Remember, when we had sine x, let me do this. I want to show you so that you don't forget this. Right, let me do the following. Now uh, we have y equals sine x. 
and we want to find the period now how do we find the period what you look at is the coefficient of x which is 1 so you will always say 360 because that's uh, the time it takes to complete one full uh, wave so you have 360 and then you divide it by the coefficient of x which is 1 and you get a 360 so the period in here equals 360 very good so when you have y equals sine 2x you would always say this is equals and you will take that 360 which is the standard period that you have and you would divide it by the coefficient of x which is 2 and it will tell you that the period is equals to 180 and that's exactly what we have in here where is it in here so you will say 360 divided by 2 or in radians you will say 2 pi divided by 2 which is 180 degrees or pi degrees sorry not pi degrees pi because in here we are measuring in radians here I was just doing it in degrees so this is how you would find the period there we can even go to number 15 please do not be deceived if we want to find the period in here what is it that we do we divide 360 by the coefficient of x so pi it's 180 so you could have just said uh, 2 pi divided by pi that would give you a period of 2 this is very very important and then I went to number 17 I'm looking for the period what do you do you take 360 and you divide it by pi over 3 the coefficient of X it's pi over 3 so what I did I converted pi over 3 into degrees which gave me 60 so you would say 360 divided by 60 that would give you a period of 6 so this is just basically how you can uh, do these things and then I also did number 19 let me just show you this one we are looking for the period and please be very careful we dealt with this in our introduction to trigonometry and we said in here if you have a function like this this tells you that the function is moving a certain units to the right so we are shifting our graph pi over two units to the right and that doesn't affect the period that you should have the period would remain as 360 because remember the coefficient of x is 1 therefore 360 divided by 1 is 360 therefore you see i have shown you in here let me just zoom in y equals uh the cosine of x minus 90 which is uh, pi over 2 180 divided by 2 would give you 90 so the graph goes 90 units to the right you are just shifting your function and that doesn't change the period because the coefficient of x is still 1 360 divided by 1 is 360 or 2 pi radians and then i tried to do number 21 i'm always trying to solve as many as i can so that at least you try to see uh, how this should be dealt with so in 21 i think the most important thing that we should do is just to try and look at some things right so uh, let us continue guys so uh, I, I also did that one please be very careful that in here it's just a shifting in here you are just shifting so I also did 21 uh, I'm sorry for that I was just disturbed and in here 
We are shifting uh, the function pi over 4 units to the right and 1 unit upwards. And please be aware that the period doesn't change. We are still having a period of 360 divided by 1, which is 360 or 2 pi. And I left as many as I can for you there. I went to 31. And in 31, they say, use the addition formulas to derive the identities in uh, 31 to 36. And remember what they say, use the addition formulas to derive the identities in exercises 31 and 36. So I went to 31, the cosine of pi minus, uh, sorry, the cos of x minus pi over 2. Uh, and then what is it that we find? This is E equals to sine x. And what I did in there was to say, okay, uh, I know uh, using the formulas there for cos, the cosine of A minus B, it's equals to cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. We dealt with this uh, in the introduction in trigonometry and uh, my first angle is x the second one it's pi over 2 which is the same as 90 so you'll have cos x cos 90 plus sine x sine 90 this would give you 0 uh, plus sine x times 1 which is sine x so this is true that the cosine of x minus pi over 2 is equals to sine x and I went to 33 uh, let me just try to zoom let me just go where is 33 there it is let me just zoom in so in 33 uh, sine of x plus pi over 2 equals cos x this is very simple uh, when you just manipulate in there, you will find that truly it is uh, cos x. And in 37, they said, uh, what happens if you take b equals a in the trigonometric identity of cos of a minus b equals this? Does the result agree with something else? And uh, what I did there was just to show you uh, we have a circle of, radi of radius 1 which is a, a unit circle and we have a terminal ray that moves in a counterclockwise producing a positive angle you have the radius of 1 and then you have your point P with the coordinates cos and sine because your x will be cos x and your y will be sine x and then if you you were to say what are the coordinates of this point p which is up there you'd say the coordinate is x what is your x cos x and your y sine x and then where does that comes from i know that the cosine of theta of this angle is equals to y divided by r and what is your y? Your y is uh, your y divided by r just in terms of uh, the definition in here. Cos it's opposite over hypotenuse and sine is uh, sorry, cos it's adjacent over hypotenuse and sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. And if you cross multiply in here you'll find x equals r sine theta and y equals r cos theta. That was just me trying to show you that. And then I continued in there. Let me just try to zoom in. Let me close this. And then we use the theorem of Pythagoras in there. 
just to show that uh, remember you said this is your x and this is your y r sine theta squared and so on this will give you an answer of one just to justify that sine squared plus cos squared the answer is one and let me just i'm trying to get rid of this this information box and then i went to problem 39 and let me just do this in 39 they said uh, in exercise 39 to 42 express the given quantities in terms of sine x and cos x so i want to express this in terms of sine x and cos x so i applied the formula uh, the sine of um 3 pi over 2 minus x there it is uh sine cos cos and sine and i found uh, the value there let me just quickly do the following very good so when I manipulate in there you will find that truly sine of 3 pi over 2 minus x it's negative cos x where is it it's in 41 express the given quantities in terms of sines and uh, cos x so this uh it will be uh, minus cos x in terms of course sorry um, let me check that was 41 okay so that was uh, 41 you have your minus cos x there but it looks like there are some that i have skipped let's just try to go to them very quickly uh, 37 37 what happens if you take b equals a uh, in the trigonometric identity there uh, does the results agree with something that you already know <laughs> yes they do uh, because if you do that in there where is it uh, 37 so if i have the cosine of a minus b and you take b equals a so this will be the cosine of a minus a which is the cosine of zero did i not solve that let me check yes here it is so in there this agrees with something that we already know because if you take b to equals a that is to say where you see b you will be writing a if b is equals to a and this is just simply uh, you solve first your brackets a minus a is zero and the cosine of zero is one or you can apply the uh, identity the cos of a minus a will give you this which is cos squared plus sine squared which the answer is one so it already agrees with something that we know 
and also in 39 express the given quantities in terms of sign and cos so in here uh, we have uh, cos pi cos x minus sine pi sine x which would give you uh, just an answer of minus sine x so that would give you minus sine x and we have already dealt with that let me go to 43 and in 43 there let's look what is happening so in 43 they say we should evaluate this evaluate sine of 7 pi over 12 as a sine pi over 4 plus pi over 3 so I would have a sine cos cos sine very important pi over 4 is the same as 180 divided by 4 which is 45 and this would be the same as 120 I'm converting to degrees and this would be 45 sine 120 and when you go there and you check let me just verify this for you Right, let me just try to verify that for you. Uh, where we have, uh, let's check first what would be the value for sine uh, 7 pi divided by 12. and uh, it refuses to convert to uh, a radian measure then but this is exactly what we 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 have so in here we just insert this on our calculators and let's see whether we will get exactly that so in here i would just say sine 45 uh, the cosine of 120 plus uh, the cosine of 45 and the sine of 120 and uh, what is the solution for this I find this is positive the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4 and this is exactly your answer for that so it is something worthy of noting and then I think I went I left many for you to do and I went to number 51 So where is 51? So in 51, they said for exercises 51 and 54, solve for the angle theta where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. And in 51, you have sine squared uh, 3 over 4, which you can solve very easily sine squared theta is the same as sine theta that is a squared you want to get rid of the two you square both sides and you will get 60. so we accept any angle such that when you substitute that angle in here it will give you three over four let's investigate that and show you what i mean so what i'm going to do there i'm going to take the very first one that we have found so I'm going to say the sine of 60, that is a squared. Does it give me 
3 over 4 is and then other angle let me check for 120 we accept as long as it is between uh, 0 and 2 pi that's what they said there. so let's check for another one let's check for 120 it gives us 3 over 4 so only those angles when you substitute them in here they will give you 3 over 4 we we accept them and then we went there are many that you can try in there and then I went to 53 and in 53 they said uh, sine 2 pi minus cos theta equals 0 and uh, I did exactly that in there I cancelled and I got a 30 there and let us just check whether it will qualify the sign of 30 oh sorry um, sign of 2 times 30 minus the cosine of 30 and it gives you zero so you can try as many as you can uh, that would make that zero you can uh, just check maybe uh, you can try to check 60 and any just between zero and 360 which ones would qualify that and then from there I went to 58 I left as many as possible out for you and in 58 what is it that I have apply the formula for the cosine of a minus b to the identity sine theta equals this to obtain uh, the addition formula for sine a plus b so when I apply uh, the formula this to this what is it that I find I find that this is equals to sine theta to obtain the addition formula for that so I find out that is uh, sine theta let me just uh, do the following right and then there was number a and number b derive the formula for cosine of a plus b by substituting minus b for b in the formula this so when i do that in this formula this is what i have negative times negative it's a positive and then from there what else did i do i went to 59 and they say now a triangle has a side two three and uh, an angle of 60 find the length of c so i drew a triangle a b c i passed in the value of a that would be the value of a that would be the value of b i'm looking for the value of c but i have an angle of c there so when you have two sides and the included angle we use the cosine rule a squared and so on and you find your c as the square root of 7 and then I think I was done I think uh, I was done for this tutorial and then from there uh, we have to go to let me check yes I think I was done I did not solve many others I left them for you I'm not going to look at 1.4 because I'm having some uh, graphing software problems and uh, I think I will see you in uh, I'm not going to deal with this also also that one I don't have a calculator uh, a graphing software for that I think guys I will see you in 
uh, you will deal with the practice exercises there they are as many as you can and uh, we dealt with all this we sketched many graphs and I think just for interest sake before we can uh, go to the next chapter I think I will look at the additional and advanced exercises I will solve these uh, I, I think probably I will solve all of them Yo, they are many unfortunately I, I can't solve as many as they are I'll try to just look at a few and then I will see you in the next tutorial where we will be looking at limits and continuity so thank you a lot guys uh, for watching please do like share and subscribe and I will see you next time